Now with more on China's agriculture, I'm joined by Joseph Glauber. He's a senior research fellow at the International Food Policy Research Institute. Welcome to the show, Joseph. Thanks very much. Now, uh, let's start with uh, in the view from here in the U.S., because the U.S. Department of Agriculture released its uh, quarterly forecast this week. Exports still looking strong. And we know, of course, that you know, like China accounts for about a fifth of that. What is your reading into the numbers vis-a-vis -vis China-U.S. agricultural trade? Well, China is the number one export destination for U.S. agricultural products. It has been for pretty much the, for the most part over the last 10 years with the exception of those two years where we had uh, active trade war going on with China. But uh, over the last couple of years, China has regained the uh, position as number one export destination. And um, as the numbers suggest, the U.S. will export around $36 billion of agricultural uh, products to China uh, over the next fiscal year. I'm glad you brought up the trade war because we now know the numbers have bounced back. but. The political ties remain quite fractious. Um, that said, do you see Chinese importers perhaps looking elsewhere for their agricultural products? Well, I think uh, the, uh, it's important to recognize, even when we talk about things like phase one agreement with the U.S., that China this last year has ex imported over $200 billion worth. I mean, they're the large, world's largest importer of agricultural products. So not only did uh, imports from the U.S. go up considerably over the last year, but also from Brazil, also from the e European Union, also from a number of other major agricultural suppliers. So China has been a very big engine for agriculture, uh, agricultural growth uh, throughout the world. Mm. And of course, you know, we talk about, if we drill, drill down a little, China buys about half of American soybean exports, a quarter of American a qu corn, uh, such a huge share, Joseph. Uh, so are U.S. farmers still dependent on China or can they find alternative markets? Are they doing so? No, I, I, no, you've, you've uh, absolutely, I, China is a critical market for the U.S. Uh, uh, one out of every uh, four acres of, or uh, one out of every four hectares of, of soybeans planted in the U.S. goes to, to China. Uh, and, and as you say, corn has also become a very important market. Uh, we've seen a, a dramatic increase in corn imports from um, uh, China. And uh, that's been, uh, the U.S. has been a big beneficiary. I think also countries like Ukraine, also countries like Brazil will soon be, uh, also benefit from the, the amount of corn that uh, China is currently importing. Right. Uh, Ukraine. You know, the crisis there has had such a tremendous impact on food supplies and food prices around the world. How has that filtered into uh, U.S.-China agricultural trade? Well, I think... Uh, you know, certainly Ukraine has, has provided a, a lot of uh, corn to, to uh, China over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and with them, uh, those exports being diminished uh, because of the war, uh, China has had to find other sources of, of corn and other feed grains. And so the U.S. Is, has benefited, but also, uh, as we've seen recently with the now uh, allowing Brazilian um, imports or exports of, of corn uh, to come into China. I think that, that Brazil also will a, play a major role. Mm. An interesting topic we are all keeping an eye on. Joseph Glauber, Research Senior Fellow at the International Food Policy Research Institute. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.